Hi everybody, welcome to an episode of Baking with Foxy. Now I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me and you're like, um, Mrs. Fox, you're our drama teacher and our dance teacher. Like, why are you doing a YouTube video on baking? Well, so the reality is that I'm home a lot right now because of the quarantine and COVID and I'm bored and I love to bake. And so I thought that I would bake a delicious batch of chocolate chip cookies. And then I just thought, while I do that, why don't I share with you guys some stuff about me so you can get to learn more about me as a person, as a teacher, etc. So the recipe that I'm making today is a chocolate chip cookie recipe that I found on YouTube. There is a YouTuber named Rosanna Pansino and she has a product line called Nerdy Nummies. And for those of you that may not be familiar with it, Nerdy Nummies is a brand that is all about making dessert items that are based on cutesy video games or movies that like Star Wars or the Game of Thrones TV series. Like she will take anything fantasy or sci-fi or gamer related and she'll make cute little desserts out of them. For this one video, she made a amazing chocolate chip cookie recipe that I'm gonna use today and I will link the video down below on where you can watch her make the video because I've made some modifications to it. But you can watch her make her own and then you can give her some love because she is super awesome. I think many of you guys know that I absolutely love to bake. If you even look at my t-shirt, baking is my therapy. And Birdie got me this, Mrs. Bird got me this t-shirt last year for Christmas because she knows how much I love to bake. And she saw this t-shirt and she's like, oh my gosh, I have to do that. For those of you who don't know, Mrs. Bird is the assistant director at our school. And you guys have dubbed us Foxy and Birdie, the ultimate crime fighting duo. No drama shenanigans can I don't even remember what it was. It was like, no drama shenanigans can go undetected by these two. I don't know. It was cute. And so that's how we kind of developed our moniker of Foxy and Birdie, in case you're wondering why we refer to ourselves that way. So she got me this t-shirt because I do love to bake. And those of you that have taken my drama class before know that I will often bring in cookies or cupcakes or some sort of confectionery, sugary deliciousness for, uh, for auditions or the day after casting results are posted, I always like to soften the blow. It's like, I'm sorry, you didn't get the lead. Have a cookie. You know, sometimes I think that helps. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Let me know if, if it helps if you get a cupcake, if you don't get the part you wanted in the show. Does the cupcake make you feel better? I've always wondered that. So leave me a comment down below. But I'm a very eclectic person in addition to loving all things drama and theater and dance related. I also love to bake. I love to travel. I love video games and I, in my spare time, whichever, whatever little spare time that I have, I play video games with my husband and we play together online or we play on our PlayStation PS4 to use the lingo. Did you know the PS5 is coming out for Christmas? We're very excited. So I just thought I would share with you a little bit about my journey and how I became a drum teacher and all the crazy, not so crazy, I'm kind of a tame person but all the things that I happened in my lifetime that led up to me becoming your drama teacher. So there is no class requirement whatsoever for watching this video. It's just for fun. So I hope you enjoy. All right. So I'm just going to go through this recipe, add all the ingredients together. The recipe has to chill then for a couple of hours because I'll tell you one time I made this recipe and I didn't chill the, the rest of it. And I did not chill the dough before I put it in the oven and I made the most massive cookie. They were like this big. They were huge and they were raw in the middle and burnt on the outsides because the cookie dough wasn't chilled. So I'm going to make this video of me putting the ingredients together and then we'll come back later once the dough, once the batter has chilled and we'll actually make the cookies themselves. So we need two and a half cups of flour. So funny story about the word flour. My great aunt, her name is Virginia and she, we call her Aunt Ginny. She is one of my favorite people in the entire world. I love you so, so, so much, Aunt Ginny. I don't know if you will ever come across this video and watch it. She is 93 years old. She's the most amazing woman. She never married, she never had children, 
And she, like I said, she's 93 years old and she still goes skiing every single winter to this day. This woman has skied all over the world recreationally as a hobby and she has stayed healthy and stayed active. And so I just hope that when I am that old, I will still be as active as she is. Anyway, she is from what we call a Pennsylvania Dutch family. And Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch, I'm just gonna talk as I, I'm gonna drop my two and a half cups of flour. Pennsylvania Dutch is this culture of people that settled in Pennsylvania somewhere around the turn of the century or even before them, they were a mix of Dutch, of Welsh, of German, mostly a lot of German people, and they settled in Pennsylvania, and then over time, their languages kind of all melded into what, what Aunt Jenny always referred to as low German, compared to high German that you would still speak in Berlin if you went to Germany today. But they speak this language called Pennsylvania Dutch, and they have this whole Pennsylvania Dutch culture that's not ethnically German, it's not eth ethnically Welsh or, or Dutch, like Holland Dutch, but it is just this, this American ethnic group. So anyway, she grew up speaking Pennsylvania Dutch and she has a little bit of an accent. There's a cat hair in this measuring cup, so gross. There is a, an accent or a dialect that they have for Pennsylvania Dutch and instead of saying flower, she says floor. Like, I, I can't even, I can't even phonetically spell it for you. But, and so there's this running joke in my family that whenever we need to use flower, we always say, oh, could you pass the floor? Or who needs the floor? It was a really funny story. It had, it had to be there. Okay, so that is our floor, our flour. Baking soda. Baking soda is good for so many things, not just cooking. Baking soda is a great odor absorbent, so I use it in like my cat's litter boxes. I use it for cleaning, like I'll sprinkle some on the carpets, leave it on there for like an hour, and then I'll vacuum it up. It's great stuff. Two teaspoons of baking soda. So I went to, no, I'll go back even further than that. When I was born, it was a Tuesday. It was 9 a.m. I'm kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. I think I was born on, I don't even know what day I was born on. Anyway, I, my love for theater, my love for performing came about in grammar school, much like I did for all of you guys. I was in a, a play that we did for class and I just loved it and the rest is history. But after that, I just started doing plays in high school. I got in with the play crowd. I <laughs> tried the athletic thing for two years. I played tennis in the fall, but then after a while that conflicted too much with marching band and with the fall play. So I dropped tennis going into my junior year. Also because my junior year, I missed the first two weeks of school. And so I couldn't have done a sport being out for that long. I went on a trip, I wasn't sick or ill or any other reason for missing school. That, all right, so that's our dry ingredients. No, I need salt, salty. The recipe calls for a tablespoon, I'm sorry, a tablespoon of salt, that would be so salty. It calls for a teaspoon of salt. The last time I made this recipe, it was too salty. I felt like also because I use, I use margarine instead of butter. I know it's, it's like a cardinal sin, but I actually, I just prefer the taste of margarine better. I think it makes better cookies. So I'm only gonna use a half a teaspoon of salt. Whoops, oops, oops, oops. That was, that was a lot of salt. Okay, we're gonna have the rest of it. Okay. Where was I? High school, yes. So I got in with the play crowd and all four years of high school, I did play after play after play after musical after musical after Shakespeare festival after Shakespeare festival. I went to camps in the summertime. I'm gonna give these dry ingredients a little bit of a stir. I went to camps in the summertime for musical theater. I just, it was my passion. It was my absolute passion. I loved it so much, but I never really got leading roles. And I struggled with singing. I was not a very good singer. I'm still not a great singer, but I've improved greatly over the years. I did not really have any sort of formal dance training. I, like I said, like I've said in other videos, I have a video that I'll link at the top where I explained that I was really, really big into swing dancing in high school. And I did gymnastics all through elementary and middle school. So I had dancing skills, I had but I had no, no training. And so I was not a dancer. I was not a singer. I was moderately good at acting, I would say. 
but I didn't really have a lot of success at auditions. My, I would say that we did a fall play, a spring play, and a musical every year. For the most part, later on in my high school career, our school underwent construction, and then we lost a lot of the spring things that we did. We always did a fall play, we always did a musical, but my junior and senior years, we did not do a spring play or a Shakespeare festival, like we had done my freshman and sophomore years. Trash can. And so I got decent roles in the fall plays, and I wouldn't say that I got bad roles in the musicals, but I definitely never got a leading role. I definitely never had any sort of a vocal solo or a singing solo. I was always the person that got the non-singing, speaking role. So like in Greece, I got Patty Simcox when we did Into the Woods. I was Granny. Like I, I was great at character roles. I was always the mom. I was always the you know, the loud mouth. If you guys were in theater too last year, we read Stage Door. I was old or cut. Like I was this big, fabulously over the top character actress. I was really good at those types of roles. And after high school, I was, I was just a little bit burned out on theater. My parents were not very supportive of me going into theater as a profession. And they, you know, really kind of made me realize I don't have brown sugar. Okay, pause. Brown sugar. They really helped me understand that the chances of being successful as a performer were very, very slim. And unless I wanted to be a waitress my entire life, I needed to find some sort of old other or alternate career path. So I went to college. And in college, I'm going to add now a third cup of white sugar and a third cup of brown sugar. Three quarters of a cup. I'm glad I read that twice. Three quarters of a cup of white sugar and three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. So I went to college and I took an intro to theater class my freshman year because we take a whole bunch of gen ed. So I took my, my I declared my major as history because I, I over the summer, I just found myself watching a lot of History Channel documentaries and things like that. And I absolutely loved it. And my, my mom was like, well, why don't you major in history? I come from a whole family of teachers, but at the time I was like, vehemently against becoming a teacher. I wanted nothing to do with teaching. My sisters were teachers, my mom was a teacher. I was like, I'm going to carve my own path. I'm going to be the only major girl that does not become a teacher. Y'all see how good that turned out. But I wanted to be a museum. And I, and I went to college and I remember the very first week I had a meeting with my advisor and I had intended on doing history with a social studies certification. I was like, I can always be a history teacher as a backup. And I remember my advisor was like, don't have a backup if that's not something you ever wanna do. He's like, if you want to study history, have history be your major. And then in a year or so, find out what you really love and have that be a minor. So if you wanna minor in art history, or if you wanna minor in French, or if you wanna have a minor, He's like, that will be much more helpful to you in college or for your career than spending all this time taking education classes and student teaching, which was basically an entire major just by itself, coupled with the degree in history. He's like, that will eliminate any possibility for taking electives. And so he really strongly recommended that I not do that. And since I really had no interest in becoming a teacher, I was like, sold, I'm good. So my freshman year, I took some history classes, I took some other gen eds, and then I also took an intro to theater class because I still I still loved theater. I had no interest in auditioning for theater, I just kind of wanted to see what college was all about. I, and I'm not gonna lie to you, the, the very first day of class, my professor said I have a better chance of being a bank robber and not getting caught than I do of being successful on Broadway. The very first thing he said to the entire class. And that really was just the nail in the coffin of me pursuing any sort of theater degree at that time. Because I was like, you know, that's what my parents were saying. I didn't really get good roles in high school. I didn't get good roles in the musical, so I must not be that talented. And here I have a college professor saying the same thing. All right, theater, like, peace out, we're done, I guess. From there, I went to a student union, like, activities fair, right? If you've ever seen Pitch Perfect, like you walk around and you're like, hi, join the Bellas. And I found a dance troupe and they, I walked up, walked up to them and I said, like I've done swim dancing, I've done 
gymnastics. I said, but I don't have any formal training. And they were like, oh, well, we take beginners. We have level one classes for people that have never done anything before. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. So I started dancing and I started dancing so intensely. It was ridiculous. I started with tap dancing and I fell in love with it immediately. Then I started doing ballet. I did lyrical. I did, I did jazz. Uh, my later on, I took point. I later on, I became the artistic director for the entire organization that happened in my junior year. And I just, got absorbed into this beautiful, beautiful organization at my college that I, I just, I found where I belonged. And it was the break that I needed from theater and it gave me a skill that I was really very good at. Like I picked up on dancing really quickly. It, it just came so naturally to me. It almost made me a little sad that I had never danced earlier in my life because I thought to myself, my gosh, if I had actually had ballet training at 10, 11 years old, I, I could have been a very, very good dancer. But starting so late in my life when I did, that just wasn't, wasn't my path, which was fine. I, I just, I loved it and it rekindled my love for performing and kind of healed a, a, a big wound that I had from, from my high school theatrical experiences. Not that they were bad. My high school experiences were amazing and I loved my directors, uh, Goody G and Mr. Did Young and, or Ms. Chavay. They're, they're some amazing people and I had a great, great time acting on stage. But I guess just the brunt of not getting parts I wanted combined with my parents' disapproval, combined with my you know, college professor saying, you'll never make it, it was, it was just really, really disheartening. And so I took the four year break that I needed from theater and I learned dance and I just loved it so much. I'm gonna take a break from talking now and I'm gonna cream my butter and sugar together. Brown sugar is so yummy and it's so delicious, but when you hard pack brown sugar, it can form like these little balls of brown sugar. So now I'm just gonna take my fingers and break up these little hard chunks of brown sugar to make sure they are, they blend nicely. Okay, is that it? Oh, there's another one. All right, back to my story. So four years of college, no theater whatsoever, not, not a single audition but I danced and I just loved it. As soon as I graduated from college, I got married and my husband and I moved to Boston where he was finishing up his PhD from MIT. He's super smart. And so I'm now going to dump this stuff into my dry ingredients. And so when we were living there, I got a job working at the admissions office so if you ever want any of uh, the inside scoop on what goes on inside the MIT undergraduate admissions office, I am a wealth of knowledge about what you need or don't need to get accepted to MIT. And let me tell you, that is one of the hardest schools in the entire country to get accepted into. And if you ever wanna know why, just ask, I can tell you. All right, now I'm gonna mix. Uh, yeah, mix these two together. Good and crumbly, so now I'm gonna start adding eggs. I'm gonna add one egg at a time, scraping the sides down. But I knew that he was gonna be busy writing his dissertation, and a PhD from MIT is no joke, and so I forgot to add the vanilla. How much vanilla do I need? A teaspoon. And so I auditioned for the MIT Gilbert and Sullivan players. If you don't know who Gilbert and Sullivan are, look them up or take my theater one class and I'll give you in a musical theater lecture all about Gilbert and Sullivan. Not all about Gilbert and Sullivan, but they're, they're star players in the very beginning of it. And this group, bear back. Okay, I'm gonna add an egg. This group did only Gilbert and Sullivan shows and Gilbert and Sullivan were a British duo that created all these musical comedies in 
the 1800s during the reign of Queen Victoria. And this group only did their, their works. So I did two shows with them. Similar situation from my experiences in high school. Always got cast in the ensemble, never got even a speaking part or anything or singing solo or anything like that. But it kind of rekindled my love for theater and I just loved the experiences. Well, then we moved to Virginia after a year in Boston. Be right back. We moved to Virginia and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I had unsuccessfully applied to graduate school in Boston. I got denied from everywhere I applied to. I had terrible GRE scores, despite having a good undergraduate GPA. And I just, I just didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up, right? Because I'd studied history in college and I loved it. I absolutely loved history. I did an amazing internship at the National Civil War Museum in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I thought I wanted to be a museum curator. And DC was great because the, all the Smithsonian museums are located right around here. And so I thought that's what I wanted to do with my life. Well, after working at the MIT admissions office for a year in Cambridge, I, necess I wasn't necessarily sure that I still wanted to pursue history or I just didn't know how to pursue history. So when we first moved to Pennsylvania or to Virginia, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sample this a little, little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's some good stuff. And I'm telling you, I just so the last time I made this recipe, I made it with butter. And you could stick your finger in, and you just the butter taste was too strong. I like margarine. I don't know why. I think I'm a freak. So we moved to Virginia. I said that already, didn't I? And for like the first two months, I was a housewife. I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. We moved here because my husband got a job working for a company called Orbital Sciences as an engineer. And about a month after moving here, you know, my husband Justin suggested, why don't why don't you look for for play auditions, like you you used to love it and you had a great time doing the Gilbert and Sullivan plays in Boston. Why not look for a troupe or a company that does shows around here? So fun fact, my husband and I actually met in high school doing a play, so he was very familiar with the world. And so I saw uh, auditions that were coming up for a community theater company called the Sterling Playmakers. and they were auditioning for a play called The Mouse Trap by Agatha Christie, which is a murder mystery. It's an amazing show. And my husband actually decided to audition with me. And you know what happened? We both got cast in the two leading roles. It was probably the best thing that could have happened to me at the time because it just affirmed that I was talented, that I just had to be the right age for the part but, you know, because in high school, and I've made this comment to you guys a couple of times, and if you don't know what comment I'm talking about, I'll, I'll link to the video about preparing a monologue for an audition. In high school, I was always cast as the mother, the old woman, the character actress, the big personality. I was never cast as the ingenue. I was never cast as the damsel or the young lead. And then when I was 22, 23, auditioning for this role, what did I get cast as? the 22, 23 year old. She happened to be the lead in the show, but she was, she was the ingenue because I was finally that age in life. And I was auditioning with a company that cast people as that in an age appropriate role. There's a character in the mousetrap called Mrs. Boyle. And she's probably 40, 50, 60 years old. And I remember at auditions, I asked to read for Mrs. Boyle because that's what I was used to. I was used to playing the character actress. And they looked at me and they said, um, you're, you're too young for Mrs. Boyle. And I was like, oh, like they're actually gonna cast someone who's 50 or 60 to play Mrs. Boyle, duh. Like I had to get out of that mindset that had been so ingrained in me from high school when I was so used to playing parts that 
were older than I was. So we did the play. It was amazing. It was so much fun. And that just helped get my passion for theater back. So for the next couple of years, I did more and more community theater shows. I got a, my act together, I got a resume, I got some headshots. I started taking more and more dance classes at local studios. I kept up with my dancing. I did more point work. And I started doing some professional stuff. I did on camera stuff. I did, on, um, I did film work, I did some movies, I did some commercials, I did some TV shows. And I'll tell you all about those specific things when we talk about building a resume, I'll go into exactly what professional work that I've done. And I just, I just, I just had a ball. I was living life. I got a job also. I was an executive assistant where my husband was working. And so I was earning good money during the day. And it was a job that was flexible enough that allowed me to take a long lunch to go to an audition or I could go to rehearsals in the evenings. And I really just found my passion again. What happened and why I ended up becoming a drama teacher was that I, checked all the boxes. I had this list of major roles in plays, major roles in musicals that I wanted to play. I got some singing lessons. I discovered I had a major breakthrough with my singing voice. I got cast in all of the leading roles that I ever wanted to play in a musical, maybe except for like Evita or Mary Poppins. But those roles, I feel like I, I wasn't age appropriate for them now. I'm kind of more age appropriate for them now. I had a leading role in a Shakespeare play and I just, I had, you know, speaking parts on camera, on film. I was in a, I was in a national commercial. I just felt like I had done everything that I wanted to do performing wise. And I was looking for a new, a new path, a new road in life. And I said, you know what, maybe it's time for me to give back a little bit. And so I'm going to pause there. I'm going to put this in the fridge and I'll tell you the rest when we come back. All right, our cookie dough has chilled in the fridge for about four or five hours now. It's a little bit later in the afternoon than when we first started. I'm going to take a spoon and scoop. That's, that's way too much. <laughs> the last time I did that, I made cookies that were so big, and that's because I used a spoon that was too big. All right, so I have a little bit less now. I'm going to, oops, oops. Perhaps the cookie dough should have been a little cooler. I'm making little balls and I'm sticking those balls a little bit smaller than a golf ball size onto my cookie sheet. So when I left you off later, I explained how it got to the point where I wanted to become a drama teacher. I had been working at Orbital as an executive assistant, doing all sorts of things that were fun, that I enjoyed. And I worked there for nearly 10 years and I was acting on the side and you know, doing a real day job during the day. And then I decided I wanted to become a drama teacher. But the problem, if you remember from the beginning of my story, what did I study in college? That's right, I studied American history. And then even while I was working at Orbital, and I later went on to get a master's degree, while I was working there, I did it online, I got my master's degree in American history. And I still, for some reason, wanted, had in my mind that I was gonna pursue this path of teaching, or not of teaching, but of, of doing something in the historical field. And I, I absolutely, I do love history. I, I enjoyed working on my, my, these are so sticky, I should have left them in the fridge for longer. I really enjoyed my master's program. I wrote tons and tons of papers. I wrote an entire 100 plus page dissertation on the wife of a famous Civil War general. And then after I got my master's degree, I started looking around for history-like jobs. I became a docent, if you guys remember from our trip, if you guys were involved in the Diary of Anne Frank last fall. You remember that I told you guys that I used to be a docent at the Civil, the National uh, Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. I worked there for about a year or two. But what one thing I really did not like so much about the museum world was just how little museum exhibits change. 
when I interned at the Civil War Museum in Harrisburg, they had a new temporary exhibit that went up like every six or nine months. And that was kind of exciting because even though the permanent exhibit, the permanent galleries didn't change, that was set up from the beginning from when they opened. During the time that I interned there, over the two years I interned there, there was a temporary exhibit on women during the Civil War, there was a temporary exhibit on children during the Civil War, there's a temporary exhibit on flags of the Civil War, and I just learned so much about how to borrow those items. I acted as the registrar, so I was responsible for negotiating the, not negotiating, but um, doing the paperwork for the, the long-term lease of whatever artifacts we borrowed for these exhibits. And I learned about caring for the artifacts themselves and then I also helped create the displays and I, I created all of the the signage for the displays and the descriptions for each of the artifacts that went into the display cases and I was just so involved in the whole process of, of creating these exhibits and that's really what I loved was the creation and the creativity part of it. Ovens preheated. Then when I got to the Holocaust Museum, like the big Smithsonian legitimate, not that the Civil War Museum is not legitimate, but it was a much smaller scale, much more private A private establishment as opposed to the Smithsonian, which is completely governor, government and donor based. They opened a temporary exhibit while I was working there and I got trained on giving tours through that exhibit. I really, really enjoyed that. The, the exhibit was called Some Were Neighbors about collaboration and complicity during the Holocaust. It was such a moving, such a moving exhibit and I really enjoyed giving people the opportunity to experience that, helping them wrestle with, with their own personal demons and, and what they would have done if they would have been in that sort of situation. And when the exhibit opened, I remember asking someone, whether it was the director of education or something like that, I was like, oh, so how long is this exhibit going to be open? And she looked at me and she's like, oh, a minimum of five years. <laughs> and I was just like, oh okay five years like that's how long a temporary a temporary exhibit stays open is is five years i'm gonna put these in the oven now for what did the recipe say it said seven to nine minutes since these are not as chilled as i would like them to be and because my oven it tends to run a little bit hot i'm only gonna put them in for six minutes So I realized at that time that maybe museum curatorship wasn't, wasn't for me. And so I started looking much more seriously at what it would take to become a drama teacher. And I went through a program called the Career Switcher Program, which was offered, a couple of different universities in the area offer that type of certification to become licensed in teaching. And what's neat about it is that it's considered an alternate route to licensure, so licensure. So where if I would have studied education or had the secondary education certification in college with my undergrad degree, I would have had to take so many extra classes. And like I mentioned before, I would not have had the freedom to take the electives that I took. I ended up taking so many awesome electives in college. I did a concentration in American history and a concentration in public history, which helps with like museum work and, and living history and things like that. Living history is like when you get all dressed up like reenactors, um, that's called living history. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I did the secondary education certification, but now here I was 10 years later, kind of up the creek without a paddle because I wanted to become a drama teacher, but I had absolutely nothing in my back pocket. To, I really felt like I was starting completely from scratch. So I enrolled in this career switcher program and to, it's kind of like the icing on this up the creek without a paddle cake. I not only had no education certification whatsoever, I also had no theater credentials whatsoever years and years of amateur and professional experience on stage, on film, etc., unfortunately count for nothing when you are going into education. 
education wants to see that diploma. They want to see the education backing that makes you licensed and certified to be in education. And my fingers are so sticky, so sticky. <laughs> definitely, like they're cold. And it's definitely cold, but I definitely should have left it in the fridge for longer. Well, well. So what I did was I had the education background to become a history teacher. So that's how I started. I went and I did this career switcher program. It took me about six months or so to get through all of those classes. And I got my provisional license to become a history teacher. I got my first job teaching at a neighboring school in history. I taught government for a year. That was challenging on so many levels because government is certainly not my favorite subject. And then to teach five classes of government, I taught the same thing five times in a row. It made for easy planning, for sure. It made for easy grading, because I just graded all the same assignments. But definitely, by the, by the fifth time I taught about Madison V, oh gosh, my brain is, what is it? The, the Supreme Court case that gave the Supreme Court more power. Um, I, I was just, I was just on autopilot and I felt bad for those kids. Like they didn't really get someone super, super passionate or super enthusiastic about, about that subject. And then while I was doing that, I also looked up what it would take to become licensed. Let me check on these. They're looking good. Even though my oven light is not covered in cookie dough. <laughs> what it would cost to get licensed to teach theater. And fortunately, I only needed a handful of classes in order to get the certification added on. So with the career switcher program and the past licensure that I took, as long as you had a degree in something, and like I did, I had a degree in American history, you could then add on a license in any other subject you wanted to, as long as you passed the praxis. That's how I added on the English teacher license. That's how I added on the health and PE licensure, just by virtue of the fact of having a degree in something. They allowed you to get licensed even without a degree in those subjects. I'm gonna let those go for another minute because they're actually looking a little, a little undercooked still. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, those are ready to go. Oh, I'll talk about now. I think I'm just gonna go for like another 30 seconds. You wanna count with me? I feel like I'm on the Great British Baking Show. Have you ever watched that show on Netflix? They watch the oven and they're like, bake, yeah, I don't want to serve Paul Hollywood raw food. What do you think? We'll probably, we'll give it a go. Are very big and very flat. All right, I'm going to put these in. Let's see, I put them in for six minutes. They needed longer. I'm gonna put these in for eight minutes. To get my theater credentials, however, there was no praxis that I could take. There existed one, but that's not what they considered acceptable to get licensed in teaching theater anymore. So I actually had to go back to school and get five more classes in, in theater. So I had to take two acting classes, a directing class, a technical theater class, a, that's four, yep, and then a history, a, a theater history and theater culture class. So I did kind of a combination of things. I did the theater, I did four out of the five through Catholic University in Washington, D.C. They have what's called a, the MATE program, which is a Master of Arts in Theater Education program, which was awesome. So I actually did an acting class of Theater, I'm sorry, an acting class, a graduate class, I'm sorry, an acting class, a directing class, the technical theater class, 
and the theater history class, all at the graduate level. And then I still needed one more acting class. I found it so, so ridiculous. How many years had I spent on stage, on film, whatever, acting, dancing, modeling, and I still needed an acting 101 class. So what I did was I went, I found an, an acting 101 class um, at George Mason that ran on Monday evenings. And so I just enrolled in that as a non-degree seeking student and they let me just take that one single class. And then I submitted all my paperwork and got my certification in teaching theater arts. So the rest is history, you guys. The very next year, I saw the job opening at our school and I applied and I got, got the gig. So now you're stuck with me. So I'm gonna finish getting these cookies all ready to go and we'll, huh. I'm gonna get these off the tray. These still look these look awful. I'm sure they'll taste delicious, but you know what I'm gonna do, you guys? I'm gonna put the rest, I'm gonna put all of these back in. Let them actually chill overnight. They get nice and firm. And then I'll try cooking these tomorrow. I'll give you an update on how they turn out. And now I'm not embarrassed to admit that I'm going to lick the cookie dough off of that cookie sheet.